Okay, good evening, everyone. We are going to start with the session number nine. We are going to start another um, day uh, of this course, and we are going to begin with the um, the topic that we were talking uh, about yesterday. But in this moment, we are going to uh, clarify some uh, questions or things that we were. Uh, uh, of the things that we were learning yesterday, but in this case, we are going to change um, the way we were talking about the decrease or the comparison and superlative part of the adjectives because um, yesterday was very confused, I guess. So I will change the way I was uh, saying uh, this uh, comparative part of the adjectives. So we are going to start with this part because we are going to use uh, some examples and some uh, simple information about this uh, part. Ayer estábamos hablando de los comparativos eh, con los adjetivos y los adverbios, pero vamos a cambiar un poco esa parte para que quede más claro. Uh, we are going to uh, go part by part because you have to understand what is uh, this uh, topic about. So we are going to have the topic is comparative and superlative adjectives. So in that case, yesterday we were talking about the one syllable adjectives. And in this case, this is the table that we were studying yesterday that one syllable adjective, two syllable adjectives, and two syllable adjectives ending in Y. But uh, in this moment, we are going to um, talk about what is the comparative and superlative uh, part of the adjectives and how can we form them because we were just saying the one syllable adjective. So first important adjectives, what are the adjectives? In this case, we said that the, the adjectives are words that describe, identify, or quantify nouns and pronouns. They help specify or write in by offering more details Okay, in this case, we said that the adjectives are words that describe, we already know that, that these adjectives uh, are words that describe, identify, or quantify nouns and pronouns. These uh, adjectives help us to uh, specify or write in by offering more details about nouns and pronouns. La primera parte, los adjetivos. Son palabras que describen, identifican o cuantifican los nombres y los pronombres. Nos ayudan a especificar en nuestra escritura ofreciendo más detalles sobre los nombres y los pronombres. So, now we are going to the comparative eh, adjectives. So, in this case, the comparative adjectives are used to compare two things. Compare two things. They help describe difference between two nouns. Also, they help Uh, describe difference uh, 
between two nouns. And we have um, a formula for these a comparative adjectives sentences. So we are going to uh, write the uh, formula. So we have uh, the comparative adjectives are generally used in the following sentence structure. We have first the noun or the subject. Then we have the verb plus comparative adjective. Plus a dance, plus the noun or the object. So in this case, this is the formula that we are going to uh, use to write sentences using comparative adjectives. We have first the noun or the subject, then we have the verb, then we have the comparative adjective, then and the noun or object or our sentence. So we have an example. <clears throat> It says, my television, my television is bigger than my computer. So we have in this case, the sentence. First, we have the noun, in this case, my television. Then we have the verb, in this case is the verb be, is, then we have the comparative adjective that is bigger, or in the case that we are using just the adjective is big. Then making a comparative is bigger. Then we have done, that is very important that we use this word in the comparative uh, sentence. And then we have the noun, that is the object. In this case is my computer. My television is bigger than my computer. In some cases, uh, the sentence will end after the comparative adjective and not include the object of the comparison. This structure uh, is possible when the context has provided enough information to make a comparison clear. So uh, we have some specification about this kind of sentence. In the first one, we have this structure in which we are using the subject and the comparative adjective and the object. But there are some uh, sentences in which we are not going to use the noun of the object of the sentence. And we have, for example, this one. It says, my brother, is six feet tall, but my father is taller. So in this case, we have this sentence, my brother is six feet tall, but my father is taller. In this case, we are not going to write at the end of the sentence, done my brother because we already know that information right so in that case when we have this kind of clear information about the comparison because we know that we are comparing the brother and the father and we know that the father is taller in that cases that we have this kind of clear information we are not going to add the done in the object of the sentence So, tenemos aquí lo que son los comparativos. Eh, en este caso, solo estamos hablando de los comparativos. Tenemos una fórmula que vamos a seguir, que es el, el nombre o el sujeto, más el verbo, más el adjetivo, ya transformándolo en la parte comparativa. 
el DAN, que es el que nos va a dar a nosotros la pauta para hacer la comparación, más el nombre o el objeto. Y dice que esa es la fórmula que en muchos de los casos vamos a seguir, pero si tenemos información clara, así como en el segundo ejemplo de la comparación, no es necesario que escribamos DAN en the noun. Ya la última parte ya no es necesaria porque ya tenemos la información. En el caso de mi hermano es, y ponemos la estatura, pero mi papá es más alto, ya sabemos que ya hicimos la comparación y sabemos quién es el más alto de los dos. So, then we have superlative because we are going to talk about the two parts of these adjectives. We have the comparison because we are using uh, this uh, part of the adjectives to compare two things and also to uh, describe difference between two nouns. So in this case, when we are using the superlative, we have the superlative adjectives that it says that they are used to compare three or more things that we were saying yesterday. But now we are uh, making like something uh, very simple to understand. So we are going to uh, remember things that we were saying yesterday. So in this case, superlative adjectives are used to compare three or more things. They help describe things on either end of a spectrum. And we have here example, um, smallest and largest. Then we have another example that is tallest and shorter. So in this case, in the case of, of superlative adjectives, they are used to compare three or more things and they help describe things on either end of a spectrum. In this case, we are going to use uh, we can say the beginning and the ending of the spectrum. We have smallest and largest, and we have tallest and shortest. We have the two parts of one uh, thing, the one that is tall, the one that is short, or the one that is tall and the one that is short, and the one that is small and the one that is uh, large. So in this case, we are going to make the comparison between uh, three or more things, and we are going to find which of these are the most? Uh, and no one of these uh, two more, it's um, in comparison with them. Con la parte superlativa dice que estamos eh, comparando tres o más cosas y nos ayuda a describir eh, las cosas que están en el, en el mismo espectro. Eh, tienen que ver con la misma eh, eh, posibilidad, pero en dos eh, extremidades diferentes. So, also we have the formula that we are going to use in the comparative part. So in this case is the formula for the superlative. So we are going to write the formula for the superlative adjective sentence. So we have now, that is also the subject. Then we have the verb. In this case, we are going to change something. We are going to use the article the. Then we are going to use superlative adjectives. And at the end, we are going to use the noun that is the object of the sentence.
So we have the example. My English professor is the smartest person. So in this case, we're saying that the English professor is the smartest person, es la persona más inteligente. So in this case, uh, maybe this uh, person made a comparison between different English professors and uh, that person uh, um, goes to that um, conclusion that this person is the smartest of all of those um, uh, professors. So, aquí tenemos el superlativo, ya tenemos la fórmula, cómo vamos a crear la, eh, la, la, la oración. Then, it says, just like comparative adjectives, the object of comparison can sometimes be left out. Así como hicimos con la parte del comparativo, podemos hacer también con el superlativo. Podemos dejar eh, partes eh, de las oraciones afuera. So we are going to see another example. It says, we took an exam in class today. And I scored the highest. And in this case, we are not going to use the end of the structure of the sentence because we know the answer for this is uh, the sentence in the class is the ending. So, Así como en la parte de la, compa de la comparación, en la parte del superlativo, también tenemos eh, ese detalle que podemos dejar afuera información que obviamente ya conocemos. En el example, uh, we took an exam in class today. Estamos hablando del grupo completo, de la clase, de todas las personas que participan en la clase. And it says, and I scored the highest. Yo tuve el mayor puntaje. ¿De quién? De la clase. So in that case, we are not going to use at the end of the, the sentence because we already know that information that uh, is the highest in the class. So then we have creating comparative and superlative adjectives. We are going to talk about the, uh, the creation of that, um, that kind of adjectives. So. Creating comparative and superlative adjectives. So in this case, it said changing an adjective into its comparative of superlative form depends on the number of syllables. And this is the part that we were talking about yesterday. In this case, we are going to talk about how many syllables a word has. And in this case, we are going to create the superlative and the uh, comparative. We have the one syllable adjectives and it says the suffix, the ending of the word, uh, we are going to add ER at the end of the sentence or the word, I mean, and the suffix er will be added for comparative adjectives and esg for superlative adjectives. When the adjective has a single vowel between two consonants, the second consonant will be double. So this is very important. We are going to have this in separate parts. One syllable, one syllable adjectives. ¿Cómo creamos nosotros los superlativos y los comparativos? So, en este caso, vamos a hablar primero de las one-syllable adjectives, de los adjetivos que solo tienen una sola sílaba. 
So we are going to add some things at the end of the word, the suffix. So we add the suffix er. The suffix er will be add. or comparative adjectives. And EST or superlative. So in some cases, when the adjective has a single vowel, between two consonants, and we have like this, consonant plus single vowel, plus consonant. The second consonant will be doubled. So, para la creación de los adjetivos con los comparativos y los superlativos. Dice que vamos a agregarle al final de la palabra el sufijo er para los comparativos. Er al final de la palabra. Para los superlativos vamos a agregar est al final de la palabra para hacer los superlativos. Cuando tenemos un adjetivo que lleva una sola vocal en medio de dos consonantes, así como aparece en la fórmula, consonante más vocal más consonante, Vamos a doblar, vamos a escribir dos veces la segunda consonante. So, then we have an example of comparative adjective with a single vowel between two consonants. We are going to write an example about this last part that is the um, the a word that has a single consonant. So we have the example. And it says we have the adjective. And, and the word is hat. We have consonant, single vowel, and consonant. So we are going to write um, like this. H is a consonant. Then we have O, that is the vowel or single vowel. Then we have the T, that is another consonant. And then we have the comparative form. So in this case, in, uh, we are going to write like this the comparative. The comparative form is, in this case, we are going to transform this word hot in hotter. So this is the end in the suffix. We double the consonant, the second consonant, then we add er at the end. So we have the adjective hot, we transform to hotter, hotter. Then, we have the the sentence and we have like this is harder today than yesterday so in this case, we are making a comparison of the weather 
uh, from today and yesterday. The temperature is hotter today than yesterday. And in that case, we create the comparative of the adjective hard. So we have some examples and we are going to create a table like this because we are going to write the examples. Six, like this. So we have the adjective. Then we have the comparative. Then we have the superlative. We are going to see uh, the examples. So we have uh, the number one adjective, fast. Then we have cheap. Then we have fresh. Then we have big. And we have sad. So in this case, remember that we are uh, talking about uh, the uh, the one uh, the one syllable words. Estamos hablando de palabras de una sola sílaba. Esa es la primera parte. No vamos a agregar otro, otras palabras porque solo estamos hablando de las eh, de los adjetivos de una sola sílaba. So we are going to create a comparative of these uh, words that we have here, and we have in the number one fast. In this case, we don't have a consonant, a vowel, and a consonant because we have consonant, vowel, and two consonants. In this case, we are not going to double anything. So we are going to use add these suffix, faster. Then we have cheap. Again, we are not going to double anything. We have cheaper. Then fresh. Again, we are not going to double nothing. Fresh. In this case, is fresher. Then, in this case, we are going to double the G because we have this kind of word in which we have the consonant, the vowel, and the consonant. So we are going to write it like this: vigor. And in the last one, we have another one of these words, and we need to double the last a uh, consonant. We have sad, and then we transform into sadder. Then in the superlative, we have uh, that we are going to add EST. So in this case, pass test. Then, cheapest. Then, freshest. Biggest. So in this case, we are going to double. Biggest and saddest. So in this case, we have our um, adjectives in comparative and superlative. But this, in this case, it's just the one syllable adjectives. Now we're going to see the two syllable adjectives. Two syllable adjectives. So it says for comparative adjectives, the suffix er will be added or it will be preceded by more. For superlative adjectives, the suffix est will be added or it will be preceded by most. Occasionally, both forms are used, but one will be more common. When in doubt, use more or most instead of a suffix. For adjectives ending in Y, the Y will become an I and the appropriate suffix will be added. So in this case, when we have two syllable adjectives, cuando tenemos sílabas, eh, I mean, cuando tenemos adjetivos de dos sílabas, sí le vamos a agregar los endings, el suffix, pero también vamos a agregar una palabra al inicio, more o Vamos a agregar también um, most, those words, more and most, because there are longer words. So it says,
Okay, in this case, we have the two syllable adjectives and we have here the specification. Eh, we add the suffix. Vamos a agregar los, los sufijos o las partes finales de las palabras. Siempre vamos a agregar el ir, el, el er y el est para el comparativo y para el superlativo. Pero en este caso, como son palabras más largas, vamos a utilizar el more y el most para ayudarnos, ¿verdad? Con estas palabras. Y dice que en muchos de los casos, ¿verdad? Ambos van a, a ser utilizados, pero siempre va a haber uno que es más común. And we are going to see the examples. We have the adjectives with two syllables in this case. So we have gentle. Then we have clumsy. Then we have happy. Anxious. And we have polite. So in the case of the comparative part, we are going to uh, write it like uh, we were doing with the one syllable adjectives. Gentle. Then we have the number two, clumsier. Then happier. But in this case, anxious is one of the largest word that we have in these examples. So in this case, we are going to add more anxious. And if you can see in this case, when we are using more and most, we are not going to change the, uh, the ending of the word because in this case, we are not uh, saying a uh, more anxious sir. No, in this case, it's more anxious like that. We are adding the more to help us to understand that we are using the comparative and the superlative. So in this case, we are not uh, going to change. In estas palabras que llevan more y most al principio, no le vamos a agregar los finales, no le vamos a agregar los sufijos, porque ya esa palabra que lleva al principio nos está ayudando a nosotros a demostrar que son superlativos y comparativos. So, en ese caso, no vamos a cambiar los finales. Okay. We have uh, the last one that is polite and we are going to add again the more. More polite. Then we have the superlatives. Can't list. Then we have columnsiest. Then we have happiest. And here we are going to use the most, most anxious. And we have most polite, most polite. Then we have three syllable uh, or more. In this case, we are going to use um, words that are larger. So in this case, we are going to use those uh, adjectives that it is not just one or two syllables, it has three or more syllables. Or more. will be preceded by more and superlative. Adjectives will be preceded by most. So in this case, when we have this a kind of words that are uh, bigger than the others, we are not going to use the suffix. In this case, we're going to use the most and more at the beginning of the word. So we are going to see the examples and we have three of these examples. In this case, we have uh, bigger words and we are going to see that we have the adjective. Then we have the comparative. 
And then we have the superlative. And in this case, we have three adjectives, important. Then we have attractive. And we have embers. So those are a bigger words. So in this case, we're not going to use the endings. We are going to use the beginning of uh, the, um, the most or more. In this case, we are going to use more for comparative and most for superlative. So we are going to add more important, more attractive, And we have here the most, most important, because we don't have anything most important in that case. We have this uh, thing that is the most important thing that we have to do. This, the number one, for example, most attractive when we saw someone that is a really, really handsome or uh, beautiful. And we say, that is the most attractive person that I have seen. And the last one. So in that case, we have the uh, superlative and the comparative form with the one syllable, two syllable, and three syllable and more. Esta parte de los adjetivos, de la, de la comparación y de lo superlativo, eh, al final no es tan complicado de entender. It's very simple, but in some cases, can be very difficult to remember everything uh, about these adjectives because we have different kind of adjectives. In this case, we have the uh, uh, one syllable adjectives, the two syllable adjectives, three syllable or more adjectives, and we have to um, write different things in those adjectives. Pero si recordamos que para los uh, adjetivos cortitos de una sola sílaba, Si le agregamos la suffix al final de la palabra, para el comparativo es el er y para el superlativo el est, that's very simple. Then, para los eh, adjetivos de dos sílabas, sí vamos a utilizar los finales, pero si la palabra es más larga, vamos a utilizar el more y el most. Y ya para los adjetivos de tres sílabas, Sí vamos a ocupar solo el more y el most at the beginning of the word. Ya no vamos a utilizar los suffix o los ending of these words because there are um, very, very large words. So in, in some cases, you know that we are not going to use the suffix. Then we have irregular adjectives and exceptions. Also, we have exceptions for the rules. Sabemos que siempre vamos a tener excepciones Para las reglas y para las cosas que tenemos más que todo en inglés hay bastantes excepciones. So, also there are several rules for writing in English. These rules often have irregularities and exceptions. Sometimes the deviants follow a pattern that makes them easy to spot. But this is not the case of comparative and superlative adjectives. At normal adjectives simply have to be committed to memory. Siempre tenemos excepciones, siempre van a haber eh, variantes, ¿verdad? De las cosas que estamos hablando, porque no siempre se va a escribir de la misma manera que se hace con nosotros. So, we have the irregular adjectives that are the exception for the rules. And we are going to see why they are different. So, we have the irregular adjectives. And it says that adjectives are irregular when their comparative and superlative forms do not adhere to the rules discussed in this handout. In este caso, cuando tenemos los eh, adjetivos irregulares es cuando no se adhieren a la parte que ya hemos estado hablando, las reglas o las estructuras que ya estuvimos hablando. So we are going to see.
Okay, if you can see the difference between the comparative and superlative uh, adjectives in this part are very, very different because in this case, we are talking that uh, some uh, adjectives are irregular because they don't um, follow the rules that we have uh, seen before. In this case, it's because they change the uh, way they are written. So in this case, we have these adjectives, good, bad, little, much, and far. So in the comparative part, we change good for better and in superlative for best. Then bad, we change the uh, structure for worse and worst. Little for less or least. Much for more and most. And far for farther and further. E and superlative, we have farthest and farthest. So, in this case, we are talking about the, the irregular adjectives. Vamos a hablar de los adjetivos irregulares. Estos no es que no eh, sigan las reglas como se establecieron para los otros, sino que estos cambian su forma. It's like uh, with the regular and irregular verbs that we know that in regular verbs, we have one specific rule for them, but in the irregular, they change the uh, structure. It's the same with these kind of adjectives. Es lo mismo con los verbos. Tenemos verbos eh, regulares y los verbos irregulares, que los regulares pues tienen una regla específica que la mayoría de, de verbos terminan eh, de cierta forma. Pero los irregulares son aquellos que cambian su estructura, ¿verdad? Cambian la forma en la que se escribe. Lo mismo pasa con estos adjetivos. Tienen una forma diferente de escritura. And what are the exceptions? We have that the adjectives are exceptions to the rule discussed in, the, in, in, in this uh, case. Uh, when they simply do not have a comparative or superlative form. Tenemos también aquellos que no tienen... Eh, porque hay excepciones que no tienen una parte comparativa o superlativa. Hay adjetivos que no se pueden eh, hacer comparativos o superlativos. Y esas son las excepciones a este tipo de adjetivos. And we are going to write the examples. So we have the exceptions. And it says adjectives. So in this case, we have the examples for these exceptions. And it says that we have blind, unique, vertical, um, wrong, left, intelligent, complete, and perfect. Those are the exceptions for this rule because they don't have the uh, comparative and superlative parts. So in that case, we're not going to use these rules for the comparative and superlative. And I have um, some material that I want to share with you right now because um, it's very important and I want to talk about that uh, material. 
So I have a PDF that we have with a list of adjectives. So uh, I will send you and you can, um, you can uh, check the document because it is complete. And we have all of the list that the degrees of adjectives and in this list, we have some examples. We are going to see what we are going to find in this list. So we have the positive, the comparative, and the superlative of the adjectives. And it has seven pages. It's a really, really long uh, document. But it is very necessary because you are going to find the adjective that you can uh, see that we have a lot of adjectives. We have the positive. Why it is possible? Because it, in this case, it is not changing anything in the adjective. Then we have the comparative form of the adjective and the superlative form of the adjective. And for example, we can find angry, we can find bad, big, beautiful, black, clean, clever, cold, cool, cruel, dear, deep, difficult, easy, empty, famous, fast, fat, fine, foolish, full, funny, God, great, green, happy, hard, heavy, high, hot, hungry, late, large. And then we have a steep, a spicy, sour, sorry, sore, soon, soft, a smooth, a smoky, a smelly, a smart, a small, slow, slim, etc., etc. So we have a lot of adjectives in that list and we are going to find also the superlative and the comparative. So having that list is important because when we are going to use some adjectives and we're not going to, um, or we don't want to use the same adjectives as always, we can find a lot of words in this list that we can uh, also add to our vocabulary because it is important that we create a vocabulary about the new words that we are learning in English. So in the list that appears in the document that I sent you, they have a lot of adjectives that you can use to create your vocabulary to use them in different situations. Queremos darle un poco más de color a nuestro vocabulario. Podemos agregar esos adjetivos a eh, nuestro vocabulario. And we have the comparative and superlative form of these adjectives. And it is a very complete uh, list because we have seven pages of adjectives and it is very, very uh, large. So you can find those uh, adjectives for them the, uh, the way we talk. So, now I'm going to write the exercise that we are going to complete, but I guess that we're just going to see the exercise, then we are going to complete it tomorrow. But now we are going to see the exercise. Vamos a tener unos ejercicios que tienen que ver con los adjetivos que hemos estado viendo, así que vamos a escribir los ejercicios y lo más seguro es que los completemos mañana. So we have exercises because it is not just one. There are a lot of exercises. Number one, we are going to uh, write the, um, the form of the verb. In this case, we are going to use the comparative form of these adjectives. So in this case, we're, um, I'm going to write a list of adjectives that we're going to transform into comparative adjectives. So we are going to see the list and we have clean, we have cold, we have slow, we have large, we have pretty, we have hot, big, in, beautiful, expensive, 
and we have band. Then the exercise number two is also create the, or change the word to a comparative adjective, but in this case, we're going to have sentences. So we're going to use the correct form of the adjective that in this case is the comparative form. So we are going to have the exercise, exercise two. In this case, our sentence. So this is, this is um, the exercise one and two. And in the first one, we're going to write a, a comparative form of those adjectives. And in the exercise two, also we're going to write the comparative form of the adjectives. But in this case, we are going to um, use them in a sentence. So tomorrow we are going to develop that exercises. And now it's time to say goodbye. Have a good night and see you tomorrow. Good night, teacher. Good night. See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow.